Welcome to Island Baptist Church. Today's Bible study is entitled, Where Do We Go From Here? Lesson 4. Good evening and welcome. The lights are where they ought to be. I'm not going to have you turn anywhere in the Bible just because we're going to be everywhere, pretty much. We're going to be almost mainly in Revelation. We're going to be a lot of places, so we won't do that. Uh, we're going to be considering some very interesting things. If you're interested in finances, I should say, I know that you're interested in finances. In fact, the problem is, and we're going to try to illustrate this, the problem is, is we're way too interested. We're too susceptible to a system that controls us through our finances. And, um, you know, I'm preaching to myself because I have the same issues. I like my money. I don't know if you like yours or not. If they're coming up with a wheelbarrow to gather it all up, I'm not giving mine either. But uh, finances play a major role in our lives here in the West. If, if we were in a third world country where all of us made poverty wages, this is a different, it'd be a different conversation. But the fact is, and I don't know any of your finances except mine, but we're, we're worth millions of dollars in this room. It's different, especially Tom over there. You're looking at me, Tom. <laughs> I know his finances. He's not. He was a diesel mechanic. They make money, though, don't they, Tom? Yeah. Now you don't just spend it. Fixed income, it keeps getting fixed lower and lower. <laughs> so. so we're going to uh, discuss some of that together and the ramifications of where we are with our technology and other things as best as I can glean from it and understand it. So we're going to do that. But let's ask God's help for all this. As always, uh, our goal is to grow in the Lord. Our goal is to understand our times and understand the kind of people we're called to be. We only have a certain amount of time to live. and only have a certain amount of time to serve. It's all going to be over soon. So let's not waste any of it. Uh, let's, let's be the best we can be at the time we've been given. So let's pray together. God, we thank you that you've given us the ability. you blessed us in the heavenlies with every spiritual thing that we need uh, in Christ and that in him we, we are seated today in the heavenlies and we, we, are, we are glory in that. We're grateful for that. We're grateful for our identity that, that is in him, uh, that has been assured in us, Lord, before the foundation of the world. Lord, all these things are absolute sureties and certainties and even though we live in uncertain times, Lord, I pray that our hope and our desire and our longing will be fixed on these certain things. And uh, God, that you would help us to understand uh, as we live as sheep in a world full of wolves, how we're supposed to operate. Help us, God, to wisely follow our shepherd uh, so that we can be all that we're supposed to be in the time you've given to us. Thank you, God. It's in Jesus' name we pray all these things. Amen. So Yuan Osterlin, uh, stylishly bearded, wearing a baseball cap, pulls out a pair of surgical gloves, wipes a sterilizing wipe on the back of one of his client's hands, uh, inserts a large bore hypodermic needle into between his thumb and his forefinger, and injects a grain-sized chip. And it smarts a little, and uh, the guy says, Wow, now, in Swedish, because this is in Sweden, now I'm a cyborg, he says. So is this a science fiction movie? Or is it reality? Actually, it's something that happened within a week or so of our, my talking to you right now. Uh, it is not a script from a science fiction movie. Uh, it is happening to people, not by the hundreds, but by the thousands in Sweden and other places in, in Europe today. The guy that I was talking about is this guy. Nope. This guy. There he is. That guy and that, that he holds in his hand is that chip that I'm talking about. There's another one, another picture of it. Here's the, in case you're interested, this is what the, I'm sorry, my stuff is just, there it is. There's the needle. Anybody have needle anxiety? And maybe, you, maybe this won't ever happen to you. So, yeah, that's a big bore needle. You've got to be able to shoot that thing into you. So uh, where it goes is a place there. Now you can see hands that have been injected with it, a uh, right hand and a left hand of two different people. Uh, I guess you get a choice, you know, whatever you want. I don't think two of them are necessary, probably. I don't know enough. Why, why would you want one? I guess because I'm going to sell it to you, by the way. And, um, and let me just say this, because I, I, my wife is a buyer. I bet most of you are. 
So I want to help you not to be. I, just want, I want to help you make a good decision about this because these decisions are coming to us. They're coming. They're going to be, it's going to be powerful. And I'm, I'm, warning, I'm going to warn you about them. So this, this man, uh, Yuan Osterlin, is the CEO, CFO, president of Biohacks. Biohacks sounds bad anyway. Of international Sweden company, uh, company in Sweden, specializes in biochip technology. Uh, the microchip that he injects in clients is a radio frequency uh, chip. Uh, it's you think well, my as long as have you noticed that you don't have to be near Wi-Fi for your phone to work because it works on it works off of cell towers and radio frequencies. This works off the, a similar system. In fact, it's a system that are familiar. Anybody familiar with the helium system of radio? Anybody here? Would it surprise you to know that I own two boxes that project helium throughout? It's helium, not in the, not the not the uh, periodic table helium, but it's a, called HNT, which is a type of cryptocurrency they pay you in. And it's, it's just simply a radio frequency thing. These, these regular fre frequency transmitters have been out for a very long time. What they do is they, they take Wi-Fi transmissions, like from a building like this, which is you're in a room full of Wi-Fi. We have, I don't know how many we've got in this building. They take radio frequency, I'm sorry, a Wi-Fi signal, and they project it through a radio frequency over a much larger area. And there are six... I'm sorry, seven of these things in this area that you're in right now, South Padre Island, Port Isabel, and Laguna Vista. Most of, these have, most of this is technology has been simply, how many of you have you on, on a cat that you got from a, or a dog from a, a shelter? You know that the animal is chipped by law in the state of Texas? Uh, we have two of them, these same kind of chips. That radio frequency um, network was created to be able to track, because what's the use of a chip? If you want to find your dog and cat, we don't have a way to track them. So this radio frequency, it's, you go to, for instance, Brownsville, there's 200 or 300 of these transmitters scattered all over Brownsville and Matamoros. Go to a place like Austin, Texas, there's thousands of these transmitters. So this is just local stuff. So you, uh, they're all over the world. So this is not something, it's something that you don't know about, but it's something that is broad, broad spectrum type of, broad layered spectrum of, of type of technology. These little chips can be controlled or be monitored through this radio frequency system. Now they were not created for those chips, they were created for the chips inside your animals, they were created to help with uh, anybody have a life alert bracelet, you know, I'm falling, I can't get up things. How do those things work without Wi-Fi? Well they work through these radio frequency that gather Wi-Fi and project them out over a larger, larger spectrum. So they're, they're great technology, uh, they, serve a, they, they serve a great purpose. But they can be used for other stuff. And I'm not saying, I'm not saying this is necessarily bad. I, I want you to decide. But this human chipping is not like the stuff that they stick in your pets. It's far more, or can be, far more sophisticated. So, so with your pets, we can track them, and we can tell basic information, you know, Fifi, and she belongs to uh, Bill and Val, and uh, they live on so-and-so street uh, in Port Isabel, Texas. Uh, that's basically all that you'll find on, on our cast. My cast not named Fifi, just so you know. It's, it's named Munchkin because it's a far more appropriate, you know, mature name. <laughs> so these that are being injected of people also can be tracked. Uh, they hold vital information, but unlike a cat, they can hold information like your passports, your passwords, your driver's license, social security numbers. They can and do hold these things, your credit card information. Uh, bank account information. Instead of accessing funds, how many of you had credit cards that you can swipe in front of a machine? Not swipe, I mean just wave it in front of a machine. It's tap. It's got that little symbol on it, right? All the modern credit cards, as you get new ones, the next ones you get a new round of them, they're going to have that on there because it's just this chip technology. And so the machine just detects the presence of the chip. How many of you have a car that runs off of a key fob? You push a button. Most of us do. I do. My car, I don't know how yours is, mine un Mine unlocks when I touch it because I have superpowers. No, because <laughs> I have a key fob in my pocket that has a chip that the computer in my car recognizes. It knows me. So that's in my pocket. These will be in your hand. Well, that's pretty cool, I think. Don't you think? I think it's pretty cool. Like I said, I already sold my wife. She's about there shaking her head. Yeah, I'd never lose my keys again? Yeah, but she'll... <laughs> So instead of swiping my card, I just swipe my hand over a terminal. Pretty cool. 
uh, I use it as a password to ID to open secure doors, uh, to open secure computers, to unlock. Now the technology is getting into firearms. Anybody a firearms people? We've got a firearms specialist, a couple of those in there. I own a few. I don't any with this technology. They're creating firearms now that can only be fired by the user. They have, they have handprint technology on it. So no one else can fire your gun. Now that's pretty cool, because then my gun's inert, as long as I'm not touching it. With the chip, you see, I pick it up, now it's my, now I can fire it. With your chip, you can't do it. Solves a lot of problems, don't you think? Seems to, creates other problems. So now I have automatic access to secure doors that, that I have, should have access to, secure phones, secure computers, this technology has literally gotten under the skin of people. It's not, it's coming fast. I've already partly sold you on it. I haven't even given you my self spit yet. They offer you a world without keys, without passwords, without wallets, without purses, by using, by being fashioned to detect illnesses like high blood pressure. These things are not the, not the current ones, but they can be uh, shaped or designed or or digitized to be able to determine whatever, when you have a spike in blood pressure, it sends a message straight to your doctor. Now, that's pretty cool. A spike in, in blood sugar if you're a diabetic. Uh, arrhythmia. How many of you, anybody here ever had been hooked up to a heart machine for two or three days and have to walk around with these things stuck to your chest and back and have this little thing in your pocket? You know, to, some of you have had heart issues or whatever, arrhythmia issues or whatever. This, all taken care of with a chip. All your doctor has to do is to be able to go and find your information. It's, it's taking your 24-7 blood pressure, uh, blood sugar. Uh, he can tell when you had that piece of pie, David, that you shouldn't have had. He knows. See? It's, it can be a great thing. It solves lots, can solve lots of problems. Uh, monitor vitals. Uh, send instant messages to your doctor or medical person. They can also be programmed, unfortunately, to track your movements just like a cat, just like your dog. Inform people about where you're going, what you're doing, what you're saying. Does it bother you if somebody's listening to what you're saying? Does it bother you? How many of you have a cell phone that's turned on right now? See your hand. In this room. So it doesn't bother you that people listen to what you're saying. You think she only listens when you say, hey, Siri. No. Hey, Google. Not only the time she lives, by the way, mine's not a woman. I changed mine to a male voice because I can't, I can't be taking advice from women. It's just not right, I don't think. So, it's an English man, by the way. I couldn't get a Texas accent. Yeah, I'm dead. I know. Can I, can I live with you? <laughs> so, it's, it's exciting technology. It's also, at the same time, frightening technology. So, so, with the right chip and the right program embedded in your skin, you've effectively lost yourself. People are doing it. Why? Why, like I said, it doesn't seem to bother you that you're being tracked right now by your cell phone and that it's listening to what I'm saying and what you're saying. So we've, we've accepted technology for the sake of convenience, right? For the sake of convenience, we, we do this. Even though we know it's listening to us, even though we know that I, you and I can have a conversation about some kind of fi some fishing pole, because that's the kind of conversations I get involved in. And that same fishing pole can show up on my Facebook feed that evening. Amazing, isn't it? It's not amazing, because the phone's listening to you. I'm not trying to be a, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, I'm a conspiracy realist. And that's real, that's absolutely real. It's very, very easily uh, discerned and understood. So we have a degree of lostness already, like I said, through our cell phones, if our government adopted this, if, I should say when they do, you can see how they could impose technology like they try to impose vaccines. Can you see it now? For the greater good? So we have a, 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 a criminal expert in our room, Doug. Hi, Doug. Y'all see Doug back there? You know why he sits in the back? Because he's seen too much stuff. Doug, Doug has been involved with criminals on the, wrong, on the right side of the jail cell for a long time. So, Doug, let me ask you something. Wouldn't it, wouldn't it be nice if every last person, especially the people that you suspect are up to something, had these chips 
and then you can sit in your office with your donuts and coffee, because we know that's all you all ever did, <laughs> and watch a computer screen and see whether he's going into the certain part of the neighborhood where you know he shouldn't be, and whether he's in the house where you know you caught him last time. Wouldn't it be cool also to be able to look in that room and see the other chips in that room, those who claim they've never seen this guy before, yet they're standing in that room at the very time and you have it in real time? Wouldn't that make your job so much easier? And if you also had, through the access of this chip, if you had access to where they were putting their money in their bank accounts and just push a button and could lock it all down, wouldn't that be cool? So you're about to do a $1,000 drug deal, and, Chuck, and Doug says, no, you're not. Isn't that awesome? Don't you want these chips? You don't want them, but Doug wants them in every criminal that he knows. I can promise you that. So do I, by the way. Of course, I don't want them for myself. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm a gun control, control person. I want to have the guns, and I don't want you to have any because I don't trust you. <laughs> That's my idea of gun control. I don't want any criminals to have them, and I want myself to have them. The problem with that is, is it's all or nothing. Same is true with the chip. So we can't just do the criminals. It's all or nothing. Like I said, if this is coming. It's going to come with a lot of power. You need to be ready. So if the government adopted this, can you see how it would be, like I said, it could be pushed over just like the vaccines were at least attempted. Uh, it would solve so many of our society's issues, like health care, identity theft, fraud, crime. So again, Doug pulls a guy over. He sees him walking down the street. He says, hey, get in the car with me. He says, what? I didn't do anything. He says, yeah, you did. No, well, I wasn't there. I promise I wasn't there. He says, no, I not only know that you were there, but I know that you had some kind of sugar drink because your sugar spiked, because I got that from your doctor, and I have the exact time that the person that you were standing next to ceased and desist physically, but you tell me you weren't there and you weren't involved in his death. Doug's going to say, I'm sorry. I know that you were involved. See how simple that is? Great technology. Amazing. Cuts down on our police force, cuts down on our law enforcement, cuts down on our on our court systems. Can you see how this would be very powerful? Very powerful. But none of you want it. But we want it for all our criminals, don't we? Maybe we should just simply start by chipping every single one of the inmates in all of our prisons. Wouldn't that be a good idea? Especially the pedophiles and the sexual offenders. I think that'd be great. We know where they are 100% of the time. You know, we have living in our area at any given time 12 to 15 sexual offenders, some of them child offenders. You know that? No, you didn't know that. If you had this technology, by the way, you pretty much have it. You can go to your computer right now and look it up. You can see where they live. There's a bunch of them that live around here. Just check it out. I'm not trying to make you paranoid. They've been that way for years. Ever since they've had it out there, we've been looking at it because we've had kids in this area. So, so it solves a lot of problems. Uh, and by the way, as it comes with, like I say, a lot of force, can you see how those who refuse to get it would be suspect? So why don't you want it, Angela? Are you up to something? See, if you've got nothing to hide, then you'll get it. So immediately when Angela says she doesn't want it, Doug says she must be a criminal because only criminals would want to hide themselves. You see the force of it? It's going to be powerful. It's going to be powerful. It's coming. It's coming. It would also enable totalitarian regimes to completely control your lives. So they would know where you are, they would know what you do, they would know what you say. And of course, they don't have enough manpower to sit in front of computers and one person assigned to one person, but they have computers assigned with algorithms that flag you anytime you step out of line. And so when you're flagged, then you get a phone call from a federal agent saying, we noticed that you were doing such and such on a certain, certain date, and your blood pressure was this, and you had this, and you were there with another two or three other people, and we know their names exactly. Can you see the difference? So... What, what becomes rules, whatever their rules are? Interesting. Dangerous, like I said. Exciting at the same time. Scary. So does the Bible have anything to say about any sort of thing like this? Well, maybe. Maybe a mark. It says we're going to receive a technology, if you will, that keeps us under control, that would enable a, a specific totalitarian government to control our lives, all of our movements, whether we buy or sell or not. Now, is it this? You know, Ken Sabi, we'll find out. Time will tell. I think it's too early to tell, honestly. But be certain of what the Scriptures tell us. Here it is, Revelation chapter 13, verses 15 through 17. He, speaking of the Antichrist, causes all, small and the great, 
the rich and the poor, the free and the slaves, to be given a mark on their right hands and on their foreheads, and, the, and the, he decrees that no one will be able to buy or sell except the one who has the mark, either the name or the beast or the number of the name. This requires, by the way, technology. It also requires uh, urbanization. Because I promise you, the Waddells, who came from southern Alabama, my ancestors at the end of the Civil War, they moved into the deep woods of southeast Texas. No one knew they were there. How do we know that? Because they had census that came through there for a couple of different times, and no Waddells showed up on the census. We know they lived there, but you couldn't find them because they were not urbanized. And they eked out in existence, lived off land and chicken and pork and squirrels and limb bacon, that's what they call it. Squirrels and raised their own corn and... They were off the grid because most people were. This requires complete grid compliance. Can you see the technology now? Can you see it now? Like I said, this is going to come with great power. So is this the technology? I don't know. But, but think with me for a second. Satan's goal, and I've known this for a long time, like I said, one of the eye-opening things for me as I was studying this and one of the disturbing things for me, because I, I've, I've, I've known, because the Scripture teaches, that Satan's goal is to be like God. So that's his goal. I, I want to be like God. In fact, he fell from heaven because that was his heart, in his heart. I want to be, he, did, he wanted to replace God. And so how do you replace God when you're not God? That's pretty tough. So, so what he does in the book of Revelation, especially Revelation 13, which is where this verse comes from, he creates, first of all, an unholy trinity. So you have the unseen father, Satan. You have the physical son who, by the way, is, dies and is resurrected, the Antichrist. It's all in chapter 13. We don't have time to read it, but I recommend it to your reading. Uh, and then he also has, if you, effectively, the Holy Spirit, which is the false prophet who supports and, and promotes the worship of the previous two. So you, ought to, you, have a, you have an unholy trinity. That, but again, the problem with being God is I can create a trinity, me, my brother, and my wife. Okay, there you go. So what does that do? But in order, the problem with not, with not being God is that you're not God. God is omnipotent, and he's going to fake that. It tells us that in Revelation 13. He's going to do as much as create images and enable them to have power to kill people. It's pretty powerful. But how do you deal with omnipresence? See, I can't, I'm not, he's not any more omnipresent than you are. Satan's going to be in one place. Say, well, he's got demons. Well, I don't know. The government has agents too, but they're not everywhere. How do you, how do you synthetically produce, because he can't, he can't literally be omnipresent, how do you synthetically produce omnipresence? How about, how about this? A dramatic effect fell through. There it is. That creates synthetic omnipresence. Because I know, oops, because I know where you are. See, and I don't know where you are until I want to know where you are because I have to check the algorithms, but still, I can know where you are. Creates also another problem with about that's true about God that's not true about Satan or anyone else is not only omnipresence but omniscience so omniscience because why I can listen to you through that it, it, it's synthetically produced it's seemingly it's it's poor representation but it's far better than any of us being omnipresent or omniscient because he has access to you then doesn't he you see the technology can you see it now very disturbing for me because I never could see it. It was like, I don't understand how he could possibly pretend to be God. But now technology, still, like I said, it's something less. But it's far better than anyone ever, at least I could have ever dreamed or thought about it. So he sees you when you're sleeping, and he knows when you're awake. He knows if you've been bad and good. So be good for goodness sake. Scary technology. The potential of it is massive. This technology is ramping up faster than you realize, and I suspect it will soon be facing personal choices about that, that technology in this country. Very soon. So start deciding now. So let me sell it to you. You ready? It's not going to be cheap. But you'll want to buy it. There will be a part of you that will. Because the appeal will be very powerful. So think about it. Never losing your keys again. Never forgetting your passwords or your accounts ever being hacked. Never having your identity stolen. When did that matter, by the way, prior to maybe 20 years ago? We didn't have any kind of online cyber identity. Now we all do, every one of us here, almost. Maybe some of us are you know, not, not involved in the World Wide Web. But those of us who you are, you have an online identity that can be hacked and stolen. 
Someone can impersonate you without ever knowing you, ever seeing you. It happens all the time, right? So wouldn't you like it if your identity can never be stolen? Never lose your wallet or purse. I think I already said that. Never have your car stolen because no one can get in it except for you. Never be locked out of your house. Have your house thermostat. Always reset itself when you walk in the room because it recognizes you, because it knows you, because you've, you know, your presence is obvious. Uh, never forget to lose a combination or how to lose your combination to see what your valuables are. Never let someone unlock your gun and use it. Awesome. That's awesome technology. Never have to worry about conditions that are diagnosed through blood. Never lose a child or an elderly person. I think that's where it's going to come first. It already is. We already chip some children. You never lose them. They can be tracked. Awesome. Never wrongly convict a person because you will know exactly where they are the instant they were there and the things that they were doing and who was in the room with them. Solves tons of problems. Wouldn't that be great? No more guesswork. What happened to the old by the flying by the seat of your pants back there, Doug? I mean, you're, we're, we're phasing you out, brother. I don't know. Maybe, maybe you've already been phased out, Doug. I don't know. <laughs> All his street smarts and learning and having to look at people and he looks at your cross and you wonder what that guy is, why he's standing the way he is. Don't got to do that anymore. Just check his chip. Where was he? What was he doing? Never lose a suspect because you'll always know where he is at all times, in real time. Immediately be able to shut down, like I said, criminal activity, closing their accounts instantly because it's all going to be there. Amazing stuff. So here's the next question. So we say, never again, I won't let that happen to me. I've already illustrated the fact that you're, you're pretty much in favor of invasive technology because most of you in this room are having cell phones that are listening to all things we're saying right now. It doesn't seem to bother you. I got one too. In fact, I got this and I got that. They're all listening. I don't think this one is. This is a first-generation iPad. But that is, that's a this year's generation uh, Apple uh, MacBook Air. So... If, if, let me ask you something, are, are we pushing back against invasive technology? Are we pushing back up against the loss of our rights? So, so let me ask you, if, if what was pulled in California and New York during our recent COVID lockdowns, the, the, the overstepping that they did, would that have been pulled 50 years ago? Would we have not had an armed uprising? Today, people got mad. I'm really mad. And they went back to their cell phones saying, I'm mad, but I've got something for sale on eBay right now, so let me just, you know. So how mad are we? We didn't do nothing. It would have been overthrows if you'd done it 50 years ago. Not anymore. Because why people are talk about invasive technology, but more and more we're choosing to hardwire our lives to a system that we have no control of, but someone does. Some ones do. It's just reality. I'm not trying to, just trying to make it clear where, not what's going to happen. It's already happening. The move toward electronic finance has already started. In fact, it started a long time ago. It started in the 1940s. Did you know that? Electronic finances, the wiring of money started in the 40s. Uh, the diner card came out in 1950. Uh, American Express came out in 1958. Anybody have an American Express card? It's old. And then they came up with a thing called, it's, it's a miracle. You should have gotten in on this. Great technology. Revolving credit otherwise known as any credit card that's ever been in your pocket, pretty much. Not a debit card, but a credit card. Revolving credit. We let you get in super big debt, pay it off at the end of the month or not. We let you make a $35 payment, and then we let you pay it off the next month, and we continue to add interest on it. We're making loads of money, and then when you pay it all off, we let you run it all back up again. It just revolves around and around. And then if you do that several times, you've got a $10,000 spending limit. We'll up it to $20,000 because we know you'll take it there. Because every time you do, and every time you don't pay it off, we make money. Super smart, but it's, it's, it's uh, electronic. Today, it's not just electronic, it's digitalized. There's a difference. The World Wide Web, whether we like it or not, we're dependent upon it. The electronics, a digital system, massive worldwide banks that manage our finances. Uh, today, like last month, I bought an item on eBay from a guy in Sri Lanka. You know how I did it? I just hit a button, click on my phone, and immediately they came with a Brinks truck to my door, and I gave them the $300 that it, that it was took, and then they drove that Brinks truck across, got it on a boat, and, drove, and rode it all the way across to Sri Lanka in 15 seconds, 
and handed him all but $300. Is that how it works? No. I clicked a button. One second later, on his end, he got a paid, you know, it, he's paid for. He wrapped up my item and he sent it to me. That's how it works. We are not in Kansas anymore. Maybe you've, this has all snuck up on you. It's fun. It's nice. But we live in an international world of finance. It's not just Texas. It's not just the United States. Uh, we are, it, it, we're, things have totally changed. Who's stuffing cash in their mattresses anymore? Anybody? <laughs> Need to get it out. That cash is being devaluated quickly. Get out of cash right now, period. Here, here's another place to put cash, by the way, but don't put cash. Put Bitcoin or something else. Behind your toilet. Got some real estate people back there. I had an aunt who was married to a guy in San Antonio years ago, and they had a shortfall and something happened. They needed to borrow $5,000 from his in-laws and his, 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 her in-laws, his parents. And uh, they were very conservative, lived through the Depression and everything, and they didn't have money in banks. They kept it in cash. And he said, I know my parents have at least $5,000 in the house. He said, I don't know where. So they went over and asked her, his, his parents. He says, oh, yeah, I'll give you 5000 bucks." He takes them into the bathroom. This is just for information. You need to check all your toilets because I'm about to tell you something that's secret. Goes to the side. First of all, turns the water off to the toilet. Do that first. Flushes the toilet. Gets the water out of it. Does the little wing nuts on both sides. Undoes the wing nuts. Lifts up the toilet. And behind the tank in the back was a hole in the wall. He had watts of cash that big around. He just flipped out, you know, 5000 bucks, and, and they paid him off a week later. So check behind your toilets. Everybody, if you bought recently, check behind the toilet. You know, check. You never know. Never know. So who's doing that? Anybody stockpiling gold, silver? We just don't hardly do that. I, I do. I'd recommend that. Uh, most, including me, get paid through direct deposit. Most of us do. No greenbacks changing hands anymore. Just digital. It's digitalized. Just move, just like that. Our finances are accessed through our phones and through websites, handle transfer of billions of dollars per day, not a single greenback changing hands. We are not in Kansas anymore. If you think we are, you are behind the eight ball massively. Four years ago, I did something I never thought I would ever do. I was looking for a car. Couldn't find it, at least secondhand-wise, in Texas anywhere, not for the kind of price, the kind of money they were asking anyway. And I found one for sale in Connecticut, and I bought it. Sight unseen. Would you ever do that? By the way, it wasn't sight unseen, because they had all the specifics. They did all the video. It was as if you were there. And all I did was click a button, put $4,000 down on it, flew, got in a plane, my wife and I flew up there, paid the rest of it, got in the car exactly like they had described it, because it was. There's, you know, you can't get away with nothing anymore, because it's all, it's all. And so we bought a car just like that. So I would never thought that would have happened. Here we are. We have a massive switch in the way we do and use things. We're moving into this area of con and, and, and getting very comfortable with these digital transactions. Most of us here engage mostly in digital transactions. Most of us here don't pay with cash. M listen, mostly, soon you will not be able to. So that's coming. We also have moved into not only digital fiat currencies like the U.S. dollar, which is mostly digitalized, mostly not in cash, We've also moved into things, like I talked about this morning, a decentralized type of finance, or called, for short, is called DeFi. These include cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ethereum. How many of you here have ever heard those words before? How many of you here know exactly what those are? May I suggest to you that you learn what those are? But they're not up and coming. They are here. And uh, what would you think if I told you that I own some of those? Would it bother you? If it does bother you, then I won't tell you. <laughs> what would you think if I told you that I mine some of those? If it bothers you, I won't tell you. So this is not financial advice, because I'm a Baptist preacher. But um, I would say you need to strongly, if you don't like totalitarian governments, and if you, don't, if you don't trust governments at all, you need to look into Bitcoin. You really do. It's decentralized. Part of the reason why I mine it, 
quote unquote it's called. There's just these little, it's, it's, a, it's a little uh, computer that basically does what's called a proof of work. And it decentralizes it because I have a computer that's doing it, you have a computer that's doing it, and thousands of people have computers doing it all over the United States, all over Canada, all over South America, Egypt, China, Israel, everywhere, all at the same time approving a single transaction. So it takes all of those to undo a single, you've got to undo all of them to control any single transaction. It's decentralized. The money in your pocket's not because they're printing it and they can control it. Because they deposit in your bank accounts. Isn't it cool to get, like I said, we, isn't, wasn't it cool to get these great deposits from the stimulus from the government? So if they can dump it into your bank account, guess what they can do? They can pull it out. That's centralized money. So as long as they're good, and we know that they are, right? <laughs> Nothing but good intents up there in Washington. Nothing but awesome people. But as soon as we get some bad people in there, who get enough power and ability, they can control you. Why? Because your money is everything. Part of what I want to do tonight is try to convince you why it shouldn't be and the kind of dangers that we're in. So uh, cryptocurrencies, uh, these require, like I said, a system of computers linked together in order to, to prove them a proof of work. There's also a proof of stake like Ethereum and others, Dogecoin and other things. Actually, it's a proof of work as well. But ad infinitum, there's like 4,300 of these coins. Not all of them are good. In fact, most of them are not. Most of them are just people trying to make money. And you may say, well, that's true about Bitcoin. I said, do your, it's not financial advice. Uh, do your own research. But I've done mine, and I own some, therefore. Uh, they have no physical backing of gold and silver. You say, well, that's why I wouldn't be in it. Well, tell me about the gold and silver that's backing your dollar. It doesn't exist. It hasn't existed till not, since 1972. The same year that Nixon lied to us on television and told us that he wasn't involved in any kind of thing called Watergate, I was watching Sesame Street at the time <laughs> as a five-year-old, and I didn't know what Watergate was. I thought it was some kind of gate that held back water. I didn't know it was a building in, you know, in the Pentagon. Anyway, so he lied to us. He Not only did he do that, by the way, it's all, it's, those are the, the, usually what happens at, at a federal level in any place, including the history of our government. What happens on the federal level, what you hear about is not what actually is the thing you need to worry about. See, what he did was have Watergate. What he didn't tell you was he took us off the gold standard and that America defaulted on her commitment to every single American, every single silver note that was in existence ceased to be a silver note. That's a default. So we could never, America would never default. They've defaulted three or four different times. The 1930s when we went into the Great Depression, uh, 1972, when we defaulted on all that, the, that note, the silver notes was a loan to you. We'll hold your silver. We'll give you a note that guarantees your silver. And just like that, Nick, I say Nixon and all of his cronies took it away from us. And what did we do? Nothing. Most of us didn't even know. Like I said, the Waddells were in the woods, you know, eating squirrels. We didn't know. Um, most of us are just like that. You know, we're just living day to day. Whereas big decisions are being made on national and international level, he did convert the, the United States dollar to be the world uh, um, um, backing currency. And we've been the backing currency of, of all nations. I mean, m many nations have as their, as their currency, like, for instance, many Central, Central American nations, their currency is the American dollar. So we're, we're the backing currency, but we're coming to the place where we're going to lose that, that position, and it's going to be tough for us. Mostly this technology, though, even though we're with, within a touch, uh, more people now buying and selling and giving. One-third of the finances that come into our church come in digitally, not through cash, not through checks. One-third. My wife and I don't give checks to the church anymore. Do you all know that? Does it bother you? I mean, if it does, we'll, we'll stop. I mean, I don't want to be offensive, but, you know, it's easy just to go online and click a, click a button. So a third of our giving and tithes in the church today, in this church, comes, don't come through checks or cash. All, they come through the convenience of touches of the screen because it is convenient. It is. Most of this technology is outside of our bodies. It's in a phone, it's in a tablet, it's in a computer, but it is only a couple of inches from where it wants to be and where technology is trying to send it, which is where? There. Far easier, much more acceptable, much less hard to lose. I just had a conversation with my wife. We have this about 15 times a day. Where's my phone? Can you call my phone? Right, honey, I know, baby. It just is what it is. 
I don't mind calling it. She's got a, she's got a watch now, or she did. That'll ring, it will ring her phone. Only a few inches from where fast-moving technology would have it be in the future. So what does this mean for us? Is it a sign of the end? Is this the end times? Is this the rise of the one world government, monetary system, antichrist? And I would just say, be careful. Be careful, because I need to click through a couple of slides here. We've seen that one. We're going to back up just a second. Be careful, because making specifics out of general things. I mean, let me give you some examples. We've done that historically as Christians. We've done that in this past century. We've done that recently. Here's some specifics that have been made out of general things. Uh, Hitler is the Antichrist. That was what was said in the 30s and 40s. Was that true? Nope. He's prototype. Very good one. So he's trying to take over the world. He's killing the Jews. He's anti-God. Sounds like the Antichrist to me, doesn't it? But it didn't, wa- didn't happen. Saddam Hussein, the Antichrist, did, how, did it, how did it come out? Nope. He's in Persia, he's rebuilding Babylon, you know, all this conspiracy stuff. Most recently, Barack Hussein Obama is the Antichrist. Now, he's still with us, so maybe, I don't know. But I'm thinking, no. Be careful of making prototypes, I mean, taking prototypes and making them reality, taking, making specifics out of general things, uh, as, as when it started taking off. Could the coronavirus be the plagues of the tribulation? Apparently not. We're all, you know, part of the world's population didn't die because that's what's required. Is it a prototype? Yep, I think it's a good one. Things to come. But be careful of making specifics out of general things. I don't think this is the Antichrist. In fact, I can assure you it's not. It's not the mark of the beast. How do we know? We ain't got no beast, ladies and gentlemen. Where is he? You show me a beast and I'll start talking to you about that technology. We don't have one. In fact, we won't have one. The Bible's very specific about this, and we can know exactly when he's going to rise because he's going to make a deal with Israel. In order to make a deal with Israel, Israel's got to be in the process of building a temple, and it's got to cause a world conflict in order for that to happen. He steps in as the peacemaker and makes a seven-year covenant with Israel. We don't have, a, we don't have temple, building, temple building going on in Israel, though they do have plans. So thus we do not have an antichrist. Thus we do not have a mark of the beast. This is not the mark of the beast. Again, you need to make your personal decisions whether you get the chip or not, and um, you're going to have to make your own decisions on that, uh, because no, it, it's not selling you to Satan, because it's not the mark of the beast, and the Bible is real clear that that's what it does, and it's certainly not the mark of the beast, but it is selling some things, and you just need to know that, potentially lots of your freedoms, and again, you're going to be lost to yourself if the technology is what it, they claim it can be, and you accept that level of it. So it's not the Antichrist, nevertheless, it is a disturbing trend. To be sure, money will play a central role, in fact, a massive role. One of the disturbing things about this is that I've been studying this for 30 years, end-time events. One of the disturbing things that never dawned on me, never clicked with me, is how central finances are going to be to this. Well, let me explain it to you. So whoever controls the government controls the world, right? Eh, eh, sort of. So you voted for him up there in Washington, D.C.? Maybe you did. I'm not looking for hands. You got to do what you ever want, what you ever want to do. I didn't. I don't like him. And I don't trust the group he's with. But guess what? They're in control of my government. They're not controlling me. I'm still pretty much doing the same, living the same way I was under Trump and then before Obama and before that. You know what I'm saying? They're in control of our government, but they're not controlling me. So don't think just because they control the government, they control you. So here's the next level. Control religion, and they control us. You're closer. you got the government now, and you have religion, so you've got my job, basically, and maybe my thought processes, but you really can't change who I am on the inside. You really haven't gotten, because I can still believe in Jesus, and what are you going to do about it? Is it like I run a scan over my head, and there's going to be, I don't know, a crucifix in my brain or something like that? No, there's no way to know. You can't stop me. So you control the government, you control me, yeah. You control the, the religion and you control me. Ah. You control the money and you control me. That is my bread and butter. See, the real force of the system of the Antichrist is going to be government. It's going to be religion. But more than anything, it's going to be money. It's going to be money. It's going to be based on an existential crisis, based on money. And that's the way this guy is going to come into control. The basis religion, 
The most basic religion of anybody's heart is a religion of self. Because I love myself. How do I know? Because I buy myself stuff all the time. And I feed myself, and I put myself to bed on the most comfortable pillows. And I'm willing to pay money for that, because that's what money does. Money gets self what he wants. Is that not true for you? Or are you totally selfless? You don't do a single thing for yourself. Money is the vehicle that gets us to what we really want. Money is the most powerful thing, more powerful in some cases than religion. Even though I'm sitting in a room full of Christians, I hope you all are. But you mess with our money, you have really gotten down to it. Whoever controls the money controls our hearts if your heart is sold on it. This is the real power. Already today in China, they've converted 100% to digital coin. They were in the process of removing all currency, all coins, all cash. China represents almost 20% of the world's population. So if you think this cashless society is some, ah, it's way out there. No, 20% of your world, poof, just like that. By the way, it's interesting, just back to the big Bitcoin argument, and I'm not trying to make an argument for it other than just simply say, here's a great one for it. Along with digitalizing their currency 100%, they also got rid of all Bitcoin. They, they, they illegalized all of it. So you pretty much, you want, to follow, you want to know what the best thing to do, do whatever opposite China does. Because they're ahead of the world in controlling people. They're really good at it. You control their money, they know that. So they're not dumb. Control your money, they control you. So that's exactly what they did. They moved it off of that. By the way, coming quickly is the, well, what's otherwise called, and I had it written out here somewhere. I don't know what I did with it. It has, it has a specific acronym but I call it, or it's called by most of the people that I pay attention to, the, a Fed coin. It's the same thing. They have a digital yuan. We're going to have a digital dollar. It's going to happen the same way. You don't ever get paid. How many people get paid with a paycheck anyway? It's going to come straight in your bank account. Uh, they control it. They put it in there. Uh, in, interesting, again, you want to see a shadow of what is to come here in the United States? Well, here's China. It's a great, great picture of this. So, so all their bills... All their information comes to, they work their job still, but they don't get any cash anymore. They can't get cash. They can't exchange cash. It's all done through their phones. It's all done through a swipe of a credit card or a debit card or whatever. Most of us, by the way, live on the same system. It's not going to be that big of a change. But here's the difference, because the Fed controls it or their federal government controls it. They give you what is, how many of you have a credit score? Yeah, all of you do. So what does that mean? Sometimes Nothing. So, but it's based upon what you did, what you bought, what you sold, how much you paid, did you pay it in time, uh, were you a good little boy and girl when you paid off your loans or whatever. Their credit score is based on whether, not only whether they pay their bills, but do you obey the rules. So David over here pays his bills on the, all the time, but he goes to a Baptist church every Sunday, and we don't like that. So guess what? David's going to get docked. Because all of David's money comes from the federal government now. We can control it. That's is, is if money means that much to him. See the difference? See the power of it? It's very powerful. So they, they know what David does because, well, they don't, they don't have the chips yet, but they, they're, they're going to be early adopters, you can be sure of that, because they control people, and this is a great way to control people. But they have agents all over the place, and they're watching. They've got the little guys with the earbuds, you know. And when we saw David going to a certain, certain store, and we think he bought a Bible. Oh, you get docked to David. You get a little phone call from a guy in a red suit saying, hey, what are you doing in Chinese? Hey, what are you doing over there? See the power of it? Whoever controls the money, controls it all. Two chapters in Revelation, how do I know that? Two chapters in Revelation is not just my opinion. It is my opinion, but it's not just. Two chapters in Revelation speak about the destruction of an economic center. Two whole chapters, and they're not short chapters. I'm about dozens, dozens of verses. So chapter 17, chapters 18, and part of chapter 19 deal with the destruction of the economic system and the city of the economic system called Babylon. So verse after verse after verse of how important and how significant it's going to be and how powerful it's going to be and how life-changing it's going to be and how overwhelming it's going to be. It's very interesting, the, the, the balance, if you will, of verses and verbiage in the, in the, Old, in the New Testament, especially in Revelation. Because you only have one chapter, and it's a fairly short chapter, that deals with the first three and a half years of the tribulation in which one quarter of the earth's population die. Only one short chapter. I'm thinking that's world-shaking, and it is. 
but not near as world-shaking as the collapse of the financial system of the day. Not near. Not near. Because you died, but I didn't. Huh? I'm going to break in and find your money behind the toilet. You know. Life's better. There's less of us, you know. There's more corn for me in a selfish system. So Babylon's destruction occupies two and a half chapters. Why? Ever thought about that? Because finances mean that much. Never doubt it. Never doubt it. So the Bible speaks of two important aspects of money and how it's going to affect us as well as affect, how it affects us today and affects our future. These are two critical things. We have to get these things. Number one, the Bible predicts an addiction to money as being part of the end time scenario. Are we there? Here's what Paul said to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. Realize this, that in the last days, difficult times will come. Caused by what? People will be lovers of themselves. We're not there yet, are we? Oh boy, are we ever. It's, a, it's school curriculum. Teaching us how to love ourselves. It is so unbiblical. Self-esteem, completely unbiblical. The first one who esteemed himself was Satan. How about that? That's a, that's a rule to follow. People will be, number one, lovers of themselves. These are the top two. Top two causes of the end times troubles. Lovers of themselves. And because of the worship of self, they are what? Lovers of money. If you, if you love your money, if you love your money, you love yourself, number one, you've got to love yourself first. Then, therefore, you're going to love your money because money gets what self wants. And then I control your money. Guess what? I control you. I can make you do anything. You'll bow to anything. And it's, not, it's, it's been tried and tested. But we've, we have some prototypes, and I'm going to give you some of those examples in just a second. The love of money not only will fund, but also bring to power the regime of the Antichrist, therefore, and therefore the destruction of the world. It's coming. Oh, here, 2 Timothy 3, verses 1 and 2. Here's Paul again, 1 Timothy 6.10. The love of money. Remember, not money. This gets quoted wrong a lot. Money's the root of all evil. That's not what it says. You can have a ton of money. God has all the money. It doesn't seem to corrupt him at all. The love of money is the root of all sorts of evil. If you love it, there's nothing you won't do for it because you love yourself. Some, of my longing for, some by longing for it have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. That's what it does. So, so, so how do we escape this totalitarian system in which it's going to control us by money? You don't do that. You won't be susceptible or as susceptible to the system. Love of money will fund this coming system, be sure of it. So number one, the Bible predicts an addiction to money. Number two, the Bible predicts an acceleration, listen, of inflation of money and a financial disparity, which means you got more money than I do, or I got money more, more than you do, and we got a lot, I got a lot more than you do, or you got a lot more than I do. No equal, not much middle class. It predicts an acceleration of both those things, inflation of money and financial inequality. And we hear a lot about these things today, don't we? But the last days will be marked by an ever-increasing inequality in financial, in the financial, financially speaking. And tribulation will come as a part and parcel of tremendous financial upheaval. It's going to be, that's how, he's, that's how the God's going to come into power. That's how he's going to do it. Revelation 6, 5 and 6. Look at what it says. He broke the third seal. This is the, the, set, the four horsemen of the apocalypse. And this is the fourth one. He broke the third, I'm sorry, the third one. He broke the third seal, and I heard a third, the third living creature saying, Come. So this is God releasing his judgment. So notice what this judgment is. I looked, and behold, a black horse, and the one who sat on it had a pair of scales in his hand. So this is calibrations, if you will. And I heard something like a voice in the center of the four living creatures saying, A quart of wheat for a denarius. That's extremely high money right there. I should say extremely devaluated money. High inflation. Because an heir should, buy, should have bought way more. Did at the time John wrote that. Way more. A quart of wheat for a denarius. So he would have a gasp at that. It's like me telling you that a bottle of water, you pay $2 for a bottle of water. By the way, you already do. So who would have thought that 30 years ago? A bottle of water? They're going to charge me for a bottle? There's no way I'm buying a bottle of water. Give me a bottle of water. You know, we're just drinking it. I heard something like a voice in the center of the four living creatures saying, a quart of wheat for a denarius is a ridiculous price. Three quarts of Barley for a denarius, ridiculous price. And do not, here's the change, do not damage the oil and the wine. Extreme inflation of currency resulting in a famine. 
Why do things cost more, do you know, today? More than they do two years ago? Supply and demand, right? More so because of the inflation of your money. There just simply is far more of it. Again, do you know how much money they've printed in the past two years, our government? So as of the end of 2021, 80% of all the money, American dollar, in existence, both digital and currency-wise, was printed in the previous 22 months. So 22 months before, we only had 20% of the money we have now. So did you get an 80% raise? So guess what? You got an 80% devalu- effectively devaluation of money. Why do things cost more? Because they're more valuable? No. Because your money is worth less. There's far more of it. 20, 20, 2019, let's, let's, let's say the economy and our portion of the economy, let's think of it as a pizza. Anybody want pizza? So let's say we had a pizza and only had four slices. You had a slice, I had a slice, and two other people had a slice. We also own a quarter of the whole pizza. Isn't that awesome? Now, that's enough for me and enough for you. But let's say without knowing it, someone comes and slices our pieces up, and instead of having four slices, we now have the same pizza. We have 100 slices. But they, they make you feel good because they don't give you one piece. They give you six pieces, and they tell you you've got a lot more. Do you have a lot more pizza now? No, you do not. You got a lot less. It's like the little boy who had a dollar bill, and a man came up to me and says, I'll give you ten, I'll give you nine dimes for that single dollar. The little boy thought, I get nine for a one? Who wouldn't take that, right? So he gives him nine dimes in exchange for a dollar. And the man comes back to me and says, Listen, I'll give you uh, I'll give you 16 nickels for those nine dimes. I'd want 16 nickels. I'll take 16 nickels over these little bitty dimes for sure. Man comes back to him and says, I'll give you 75 pennies for those 16 nickels. You follow the math? So now, the little boy's happy. I got 75 pennies for one piece of paper, and the man's made 25% on the exchange. That's exactly what the federal government has done in printing money. Unless, you, unless you've gotten a massive raise, unless you're making 8% per month or per quarter, you're losing money. That's what inflation of 8% is doing. So, so, so again, not financial advice, but I just recommend that you get out of cash if you're sitting on a bunch of it, because it is becoming devalued. I'd recommend, and not financial advice, that you get into something like gold or silver or Bitcoin. I would not recommend you get into equities. I'm not an equity broker. I don't know a lot about it, but I'll know enough to know that the stuff is going south pretty quick. Um, Just do your own research. But cash right now, and probably forever in the future, is becoming devalued. It's worth far less than we could have paid. When, when When Nixon was interrupting my Sesame Street show, if I could, what I could have bought with that money, it, I didn't have any. But if, if I'd had the same money I have today, I would have been worth a, a bunch of money. But, but again, what is money? It's just what we call it, what it is. So it's, it's not that things have gone up more. It's just simply because our dollars are worth less. There's just a whole lot more of them. Your houses aren't worth more. Your dollar's just worth less. The cars aren't worth more. They're not. They've not done anything. They haven't put gold plating on them or anything like that. Your dollar's just worth less. A bag of chips isn't worth more. Your dollar's just worth less. And it's becoming, that's what happens when you, when you inflate the currency. So back to our verse here. So the denarius, the denarius was plenty of money, plenty of money to feed a family. A man could work all day and have enough money to feed his family breakfast, lunch, and dinner and have enough money left over for the next day in case something happened he didn't get a job the next day. For a denarius to only buy one quart of wheat, extreme inflation. Three quarts of barley, no one can live on that. Hardly one person could live on that. So this is extreme inflation of currency. A denarius was, something, was their basic, it was their dollar, if you will, or a $10 bill. So, so to say that the denarius would only buy that much, everybody would have gasped. What do you mean? What are we going to do? I can't get a job that pays more than a denarius. Yep, you're going to be in a bad way. That's the end times. That's what's coming. It predicts extreme inflation. 
Yeah, here we are, you know, to a, to a certain degree. Here we are. So basic staples are outrageously expensive. Can you picture that? Yeah, you can. Not just, I mean, we have supply chain issues. I'm not saying we have it, but that's not our only issue. Our real issue is the inflation of our money. During the Weimar Republic, which was the, the government that existed after the Second, First World War and before Hitler came to power in Germany, the Weimar Republic, their inflation, the hyperinflation situation, because we had so penalized Germany, Germany had no way to, to buy and sell, no way to exchange with other countries. We just Everywhere we curtailed them in every way, we basically set them up for the rise of Hitler. But nonetheless, how it came about was Weimar Republic, in, in those days, inflation was so high that a man, the true story, carry, in order to buy his groceries, he had to get a wheelbarrow to carry enough German marks to the, to the grocery store. And when he came back out... Not afraid anybody would steal the marks, so they were literally just hardly worth the paper they were printed on. Somebody had stole his wheelbarrow and left the German marks on the ground. Because the wheelbarrow, somebody could work with a wheelbarrow. You know, they could barter with a wheelbarrow, but they couldn't do anything with the German, German marks. So mark it carefully. The terrible times of inflation in Germany made it ripe for the rise of a diabolical one who sent them into a tailspin of the worst times hit Germany has ever had in the centuries of existence for the next 15 years. And millions of people lost their lives as a result of it. It all came because of a financial crisis. It all came because of our, I should say, our, the world's mishandling of the Germans and the punishment we put upon them that created this huge financial crisis. So what will make the future right for the rise of the terrible one? Money. The love of it. The mishandling of it, the inflation of it, the disparity of wealth. The Germans, listen, were willing to lay down their freedoms. How many of you are German here? Germans? Come on, we're not going to... We'll lynch a few of you, but the rest of you. Germans? Any German? German, German, German. Summer fruit. Holy cow, that's as German as it gets, right? How many of you have been around Germans? How many of you like to go to Fredericksburg? Fredericksburg is a great, quaint little town. Fredericksburg is sort of classic of what Germans do when they go into a place. They're very conservative, very clean. Everything they do is top-notch. Anybody own any German firearms that were built before the Second World War? Man, those, the best guns. The best. Those guys, they knew, guys too, they knew how to make them. They were good. The Germans were conservative. I mean, every German you knew prior to the Second World War, they were Lutherans, they were Catholics, they were conservative. Their kids were dressed, spit, pits polished. Uh, houses were, were good. They had a nice level of income. They were all religious. They weren't bad people. They were people you would love. They're still great. I've traveled in Germany before. They're great people. They're nice. They're nice. I can't believe they're nice to Americans. We've been occupying their country since World War II. They're nice. They were super nice to us. They're kind of the way the Germans have always been. But the Germans, because of the disparity of money and because of the inflation of money, were willing to lay down their freedoms to this diabolical one called Hitler. They laid down their freedoms, their rights. They committed terrible atrocities. They gave up their Bibles. They gave up their churches. They gave up their pastors. Don't do that to me. <laughs> they worshiped the one who pulled them out of this crisis. They killed for him. They died for him. They turned the world upside down for him. Why? Because... They're just like you and me. They love their money. And they love the one who could help them out. One, we're one existential crisis away from that level here in the United States and really in the world. So, so number one, extreme uh, inflation of money. Number two, extreme disparity in wealth. The last clause here, quart of wheat for a denarius and three quarts of wheat for a barley. But notice the last one. Do not damage the oil and the wine. Nobody touches the extreme commodities. That's the good stuff. That's a hint to tell you what the conditions. You've got people who can't pay, no matter how hard they work, they can't feed their own kids. But you have a certain elite echelon that don't, they, they're just getting richer and richer and richer. That's the conditions of the end times. So if you think hyperinflation can't starve you and make the rich richer, talk to Venezuela. Last 20 years, that exact thing has happened to them. Again, it's a prototype. We need to learn from it. Revelation 13, again, back to this passage again. He causes all the small and the great and the rich and the poor, the free and the slaves, to be given this mark. It's a, literally the word in, word in Greek literally means to be placed under your skin. That could be just as simple as a tattoo. I'm not saying this technology is it, but it sure is interesting, isn't it? 
and on their right hands or on their foreheads. What's that location for? Well, there's a biblical reason for it because this Antichrist is going to be marked in the same way, part of his injury that leads to his death and ultimate resurrection. He's injured in his head and his right hand. So part of it is associating yourself with him. It's like getting the same tattoo as your friend or your wife or whatever because why? You love them and you want to be with them. That's kind of the same, kind of the same idea, but I think it's more than that. Given this mark on the right hand of their foreheads, and he decrees that no one will be able to buy or sell except the one who has the mark, either the name of the beast or the number. So it's digitized, that's interesting, or the number of his name. So, so large portions of the death that are going to happen during the tribulation will be due to starvation. It just will. Because why? Because we know how much stuff it's going to cost. People can't afford it, and they can't get a job that pays for it. So they're going to have to either live by hook or crook, or they're going to have to submit to this system. Because he's going to have you over a barrel. And that's over a barrel, to be sure. And those unwilling to receive the mark participate in this worldwide system will either be killed on the spot or die of starvation or be on the run for the remainder of the time. Again, so Angela doesn't want to receive the chip, even though it's government in force. So immediately we suspect that Angela is up to nefarious stuff. Because why doesn't she want to track us to track her? Angela, if you're not going anywhere, you shouldn't go, sweetie. Then why don't you take the mark? I mean, I'm sorry. That's a that's a Freudian slip. Why don't you take the chip? That makes sense, doesn't it? If Angel's got nothing to hide, why, why, why didn't she take the chip? If you've got nothing to hide, why don't you take the chip? Well, you've got other reasons to object, don't you? I understand. So do I. But understand, they're not going to understand that. They aren't. They aren't. Eventually, they will not. You will be ruthlessly boycotted. It'll be the ultimate cancel culture. It's coming. It's absolutely coming. How soon? I don't know. But boy, is the technology ramping up to that level. Instead of a vaccination card, which by the way, I, I consider a prototype of what is to come, instead it'll, it'll be not a show me your vaccination card, it'll be show me your hand or your forehead. You see it now, can't you? So now, like I said, it's disturbing stuff. One of the laws of understanding prophecy is that future events, end time events, cast their shadows before them. In other words, the shadows arrive before the realities arrive. So what do we have? Let's consider some of the realities of the shadows that we can consider today. They're not necessarily realities. Like I said, don't be careful to make specifics out of generalities. Socialism, totalitarianism. It's a shadow of the future. It is. It's a good shadow. It's a great warning. What's coming? It'll be something like that. Coronavirus is a shadow. What's coming? Who would have thought could have swept the world that fast and shut down everything? Well, that's... That's biblical in nature, isn't it? Well, it, it was bad, but it wasn't, it wasn't horrible. It didn't kill a quarter of the world's population, but there's one coming. It's a shadow. Financial upheaval and disparity of wealth and hyperinflation. Can you see that now? It's a shadow. It's going to be very powerful. Biochips that make life easier. Yeah, it's a shadow. It's a shadow. So, so, so I just have 50 more minutes. No, I'll get real quick. We'll be done. This is the most important part, I think. So now I think I've sold you on how, how serious this is. Now I want to tell you on what we should do. Where do we go from here? Dr. David, Jeremiah, this is his series, right? And I'm copying a lot of his stuff. And I'm adding some of my things to it, of course. He didn't, know, he didn't say anything about Bitcoin. and my, He didn't mind Bitcoin, just so you know. Just, you know, I don't know what your choice is. I don't want a pastor that minds Bitcoin. Okay, I'll stop. Maybe. Where do we go from here? Number one. Determined to count the cost. What does it cost to be a follower of Jesus? Well, I would suggest to you, at least in my lifetime, it hadn't cost me a lot. It just hasn't. I mean, it's cost me a career. I could be something else, maybe making more money. I don't know. I'm not missing anything. I'm, I'm enjoying what I do. But I have been asked several times, why do you have all that education? You can be making a whole lot of money somewhere else. I, yeah, I'm doing what I want to do. But it costs to follow Christ. But that's really sort of minimal. I mean, this church pays me well. I get to go on trips, going to Israel to see, you know, the tombs there. And life's not, life could be far worse for me. So what's the cost of following Jesus? Jesus makes this statement, for which one of you, when he wants to build a tower, does not first? So this is, he's given a description, of, or I should say, an analysis of what it means to follow him. Does not first sit down and calculate the cost to see if he has enough to complete it. Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation, by the way, this is Luke chapter 14, verses 28 through 33. Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation, is it not able and not able to finish? All who are watching this, watching it will begin to ridicule him, saying, "This person began to build, is not able to finish." Jesus is basically trying to talk you out of following him. 
It's interesting. In case you miss it, here's what he says. So then none of you can be my disciple who does not give up all his own possessions. Wow. So he says, i got to lay it down every day. So, if, so I'm losing all my stuff every day. I'm dying to myself every day. So when someone comes to confiscate my stuff or kill me, ah, I've been, ain't no big deal because I've been doing that every day. Come on in. Can I fix you a cup of coffee? See the attitude? Got to have that attitude. Determined to count the cost. When Christ is everything, everything else is nothing. You're going to lose it all anyway. Come and get it. Our circumstances could change, and at some point they are going to change, and we need to decide who we're going to be on that day. You need to make that decision now. Proactive instead of reactive. Well, I'll just make the decision from the cuff. You won't, probably won't be a good decision. Better to be proactive and reactive. Determine now what Jesus is worth to you. Following Christ is worth to you. Jesus says, if you're going to follow me, it's going to cost you everything now. Not when they come to chip you or whatever. Now. Right now. Decide that Jesus is going to be first in your life today. So determine to count the cost, number one. Number two, determine to be confident. The wonderful news that we have about living for Jesus is that we have the confidence to know that he will always be with us. Hebrews 13, 6, we have confidently say, the Lord is my helper, I will not be afraid. What will man do to me? We've just, you know, a lot of these verses have sort of been meaningless to us as American Christians. I guarantee you that means a lot to a Ukrainian Christian right now, don't you think? Some Sudanese Christians over the past 20 years, some Eastern Bloc Christians when, when Russia, you know, walked in over all of half of Europe, it meant a lot to them means very little to us because, you know, everybody's a Christian over here, right? Yep. Our president is. He says he is. What is your definition of a Christian? So, so, so since God's with me, I'm not running. I'm not worrying. I'm not uh, fearing whatever Satan-inspired people can do to me. I shouldn't. There's David. This is not just a New Testament thing. The Lord's my light, my salvation. Whom shall I fear? If he is, then the answer is nobody. The Lord is my defense of my life. Whom shall I dread? Well, it's not, that's nothing to dread. I'm not trying to scare you. I, just, I wanted to scare you enough to get you here tonight so that I could tell you not to be afraid. <laughs> <laughs> so determined not to count the cost. Determined to be confident. Number three, determined to be content. Ooh, there's a big word. Because God will never leave us nor forsake us, right? Here we got it. Here's the rest of, the, rest of that verse. That, that should be 13, 5, and 6. Make sure that your character is free from the love of money. Make sure of that. Make sure of that. It's not just some little moral issue within you. It's going to become an existential issue. And it is already. Because that, kind of, that love of money right now, is caused, if you have it, it's causing you problems. I promise. Being content with whatever you have. I'm not saying look for a promotion or don't try to do your best or don't accept money when people offer to you. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying be content. For he himself has said, I will never leave you, desert you, nor will I uh, uh, abandon you. He says, Ecclesiastes, here's Solomon, who had it all. One who loves money will not be satisfied with money. No one who loves abundance with its income. Never. It'll never be enough if you love it. It'll never pay you enough. You'll never have enough. You'll never stop seeking it. I promise you, scriptures are not an exception to them. So determined to count the cost, determined to be confident, determined to be content. Here's what Paul says about his own contentment. Philippians 4.13, I have learned to be content. Isn't that interesting? So Paul thought he was a great guy. I thought he was born being good. No. Anybody have, when you had kids, they, were, they were, came out content? <laughs> Did you? Like, we need you to leave right now. Because... We cannot have perfection in this room. The rest of us don't have that. I was not born content. None of my kids were born content because it was all put because of my wife. You know, she's such a sinner because they just came from her. No. No. No, because we're sin we gave birth to sinners. All of us did. Part of being sin sinful is that we're not content. More, more, more. Give me more. Let me have more. Listen, if that's your attitude, you're susceptible to this regime. It's coming. It's going to be everything that a child wants it to be. He's going to give you everything as long as you just do what he says. You can have all of it, the whole world, everything. 
We learn to be content by honestly evaluating our lives and understanding what life is really about. You have to learn it. Make yourself. Make yourself do it. Make yourself. Whatever it takes. Be content with yourself. Be content with the position that God has given to you. The more we say more, 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 the more we're going to be susceptible to whatever. We're willing to lay down anything to get whatever that is. It's going to be the power of the end times. It's, it's going to be far more than government, far more than religion. It's going to be the heart of what we really are, which is money. Money's going to do it to us. It's doing it to us right now. Why, why are... So let's just speculate here, because I don't really know. Well, I didn't vote for him up there. I know you all know that. Why would he want to be in that job with all of us not liking him? Would you want to do that? I wouldn't want to do that. How much do they make? How much do he make? How much? 400000 a year. There are far easier jobs for that money. Far easier jobs for less money. I'd be willing. I mean, if that's all it is, if that's all he's making. But you know he's not just making that, right? You know he's not. And you know those who are associated with him aren't. And, and I'm not just talking about the current regime. I'm talking about any regime that's been there. I mean, truly. It's, it's always been that way. People want power. Why? Because power gets them what they want. Among those things is money. Just this, like I said this morning, why they invade Ukraine? Because there was just some reasons that we were just upset with the Ukrainians. No, it's about money. It's about money. I, thought, I found it very interesting. I listened to a news article two years ago during the Trump administration about the New York Times. Uh, they were talking about how horrible Ukraine was and the Ukrainian president. They were running them down. I mean, they were the worst people. There's nothing but criminals over there. They're human trafficking over there. They're doing this and that. Now they're the darlings of the media. What in the heck happened? Nothing. It's just, well... I started to say, it's just them idiots talking to you. Actually, you're the idiot if you're listening to them. They're lying to you. It's just an exchange. Of, it's just a money issue. It's always no more, no more complicated than that. Why, well, read the Bible, all these invasions, all these things. What were those guys after? Money. Or whatever money was at that time. That's all they're after. It's just because our hearts are wicked. Well, the wickedness of our hearts shows itself in our money because the love of money produces all this evil. Stuff. So if I get rid of the love, well, I get rid of a ton of evil in my life. And that's what happens. So we're going to stop. We need to stop. Because y'all have been good. Thank you very much. We're going to stop right there. I have time for maybe one question. And we'll roll out of here. Mark? Yeah, he was a Swede. That guy injected. And I know you're a Swede, but we're not against you, Mark. We love you anyway. <laughs> that all you need to say, right, Mark? You're not a part of that. those Swedes over there. No more. We owe China ten trillion or more. So we're indebted to China, yeah. So being they have that much control over us because of money. Yep. And they have almost a hundred percent no currency anymore. What does that mean for us? Well, neither neither is the money that we possess currency. I mean, if they possess of ours is current. It's not. It's currency, but it's digital. So it's interesting. You know, as soon as as soon as uh, the, they invaded Ukraine. Uh, Russia had a ton of American dollars. We closed down all their dollars. How do we do that? We got in our Brinks trucks. We got on barges and we went over and then we said, you need to load these things down right now until you get out of Ukraine. We want all of our cash. Is that how we did it? Or is it not true that our government just pushed a button and said, click, you, can't, you don't have American dollars anymore? So I'm, tell, I'm telling you, if they can shut down a whole country from using U.S. dollars, you, you're nothing. You're nothing. The fact that you have control over your money right now is because they're allowing you to have it. I, you know, again, I'm not trying to make you feel bad. I'm just trying to bring you up to, up to speed with reality. It's where we are. We've been there for quite a while. As long as they're good like they are right now up there, we're going to be fine. But as soon as we get bad people up there that decide they don't like the way you do things, boom, money's gone. Don't pull it out and stick it in your toilet, though, because it's deflating. I'm oh, sorry, it's inflating. Yes, sir? So, when you're talking about the chip, in China today, if you're, if you're a Chinaman, Stopped by the police, and you don't have a cell phone on you. They want to know what are you doing. They want to know what you're doing. Why yeah. Are you trying to be exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You're pulled. Do you hear what he said? 
In China today, if you're pulled over by the police and you don't have a cell phone on you, they immediately want to know what you're up to because they think it's nefarious because they, they, the system that they're tracking you with and they're tracking your exchanges with is that cell phone. So, so is it a, it's a chip, but it's just not in your hand. In your hand. It's in your hand. So. Think of the, the, for, the pressure that puts on the underground church. How do you have an underground church yes. if they know where you Excellent. are? Excellent. 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 Again, it forces some decisions upon us that we're going to have to make pretty soon, I, w- I would think. I would love to say we're going to, all the good ones are going to pass away. We won't have to face this no more, right, David? <sighs> I just don't think that's true. I've already had two questions for the one question I was going to accept. Yep, the third one. So, um, in the scripture, if you do take the mark, do you go to hell? Yeah. Your yeah, you definitely do. This is not, this chip is not the mark of the beast. I'm not, trying to, I'm, not trying to put moral, I'm, not, I'm not trying to put a moral slant on this, per se, but I am trying to say, as a, as a thinking American, you ought to think twice about taking this thing, because it, it is going to inhibit your ability. Again, it's not the mark of the beast, because we don't have a beast. The mark of the beast is going to be not just, I wanna, want money, it's going to be, this is, he's it. The antichrist, antichrist, we, we hear anti, we automatically think against this guy is not going to be against Jesus. You understand that, right? Let me say that again. The Antichrist is not going to be against Jesus. He's going to be in favor of Jesus. He's going to claim all the rights and responsibilities of Jesus. I'm him. Not going to be against Jesus. Anti means in place of. He's just going to be in place of him. I'm the guy. Trust me. My system has this mark. Don't you love me and worship me? Yes, sure we do. So it's going to be a heart decision, a love decision, a faith decision. It's not going to be, again, I'm not trying to slander it, saying it's only going to be financial. The finance is going to have a huge, huge control of it. It's going to be part of the sweeping power of it. But it's going to be, it's going to be a commitment of the heart. Obviously, let's say, so I trick you into taking the mark of the beast. There's no such thing. There's no such thing. So either you do it with your own heart. It's always God judges is based upon our heart's decision, right? Not upon, oh, I'm carrying a cell phone now and the government can track me. I'm probably going to hell for that. No, you're not. Not a lot of difference. By the way, hardly any difference between that, that and taking a chip today. Most of you tolerate a phone in your pocket. Let me just, again, say this to you. You'll tolerate a chip as well. Hardly any difference. It's a very minute amount of difference other than it's able to, to check physical body issues. But your phone really is able to do that. How many of you have apps on your phone that's able to detect your heart rate and you've got a watch on your arm that does? You're already doing most of this stuff. It's, real, it's not very far from where we are today. It's so close. So, okay, I, one more in addition to the one, I think, Les, you were next, yes. Yeah. Well, they can track you with your social security number. They already do, yeah. They track you with your... Mm-hmm. Right. Whatever you do in life right now, they got you the social security number. That's right. And you say, I don't want people to know what I'm spending my money on. Every time you spend a credit card, guess what? Somebody knows what you're doing. So and the only reason why the right people don't know is because they don't want to know, but as soon as they want to know, they will know. You already, like I said, this, the level of control, we've already submitted to it. You're already there. It's not far from where we are at all. We think we're so far from this stuff. Oh, no, you're not. You're fooling yourself. Most of us all operate within a chipped system, if you will, just the chip is outside of our bodies. Most of us operate in this system, though. So we're going to stop right there. I have other questions, I know, and, and, and we don't, we've got to let people... Uh, run because we've been here for an hour and a half so so let's pray and i can answer any questions afterward if you would like to ask me so god i thank you so much for giving us uh warnings god i thank you for opening our eyes i thank you for the days that we live in because they're great days Uh, they're dark days but they're great days to shine for you they're great days to show what you've done in our lives uh, the kind of believers that we can be put to the challenge. We think of our brothers and sisters in Christ in places like Ukraine and Sudan and other places in China who are 
really, really under, literally under the gun. We lift them up to you right now. We pray, God, that they would honor you in life and in death. We pray we'd have the same attitude. God, thank you for speaking to us tonight. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for visiting. Find us at www.islandbaptistchurch.org.